Okay, a lot of folks, when they're cleaning these black powder guns, they use their ramrod. And usually your ramrod comes with several different attachments that allows it to be longer so you can use it to clean. They'll have a jag, all the stuff. I use my shotgun cleaning kit. It's a lot bigger, as you can see. This was an old Hoppies shotgun cleaning kit that I've had since I was a kid. Works per perfect for black powder. And uh, these inlines are easy because you can take the breech plug out and clean them straight through, just like cleaning a modern firearm, except different chemicals. So what I'd typically do would be to drop, drop this action. And you can see there's your breech plug in the back. Most of these guns, when you buy them, they come with a tool that's made to take that breech plug out. So you have the breech plug and then this, this goes in there and that's a little handle. So you come back to the back here, this goes on there and you turn it. And whoops, if you don't drop it. And that will let you unscrew your breech plug. Now, these don't unscrew easy. Fair warning, I told you before, black powder is very corrosive, and until you clean it up, it leaves a hell of a mess. It's dirty, it'll feel like somebody threw sand in the threads. So sometimes these get stuck. That's why you don't ever really want to leave them in there after they've been fired for a long time, or you could be uh, making a trip to the gunsmith. Okay, and there you have your breech plug. Now, a lot of you may look at that and say, well, that looks like pipe thread. Guess what? It is pipe thread. Everything about these things is very simple. As you can see, it's got the hex on there. That's where this tool goes that you use to take it out. And if, uh, if you look through there, you'd be able to see there's a little tiny pinhole that allows the 209 primer to shoot its fire into the breech. So this is your breech plug, and it, and it is actually kind of messy at this point. I use Never Seize to lube these threads up because getting a stuck breech out is no fun. That's one of the only things about this that uh, is really messy and not edible is, well, not that you'd really want to eat any of it, but Never Seize. There's uh, all kinds of other products you can use. I found Never Seize works the best. And so at this point, your barrel is now wide open. There's nothing to stop it. It's nothing but one great big hole. So what I'll do is I'll grab myself a patch. There's nothing fancy about these. It's just uh, cotton or jersey, I don't know, like t-shirt material. You can use expensive cleaning patches if you want. That's up to you. But uh, that probably looks like a huge patch if you're used to cleaning a center fire rifle, but... These things have a big bore. We're talking 50 cal. It's a half inch. Okay, now this stuff here is uh, Thompson Center number 17. This is their cleaner. It actually, uh, what it really is, is soap and water, but it's, it's very strong detergent. And I uh, just make sure the patch, as you can see, it's kind of bluish colored. Make sure the patch is saturated. Make sure it's wet. Again, you don't have to worry about spilling it because it's soap and water. Okay, and then down the bowl we go. You can go from either end, doesn't matter. And when it comes out the other end, I think you'll be surprised. Just after a few shots, like I said, black powder is dirty, very dirty. And it smells like sulfur, it smells like rotten eggs when you're cleaning it up. So you run a wet patch down, and then you start putting dry patches to it and get it cleaned up. Just like with any other firearm, you want to uh, get it clean. You can see there's quite a lot of uh, residue that comes out. Okay, so this would be patch number three, second dry patch. Usually it takes two or three dry ones to get it all the way clean. Longer if you don't use bore butter. 
the ball butter actually helps. It keeps the, uh, the black powder residue from sticking to everything, which is good. And I always try to clean the threads out as best I can too, because they're always dirty. So even on patch number three, as you can see, there's still a fair amount of residue coming out. And the more time you spend cleaning these, the easier it's going to come apart for you next time. That's just the way that it is. If you buy one of these and shoot it and have a good time with it one time, then you don't clean it and you put it away and you leave it that way for six months or several years or whatever, you may not be able to get it apart. You may not be able to ever use it again. So you should really take care of them. As you can see, that's starting to clean up really nice. Not bad at all, very little. So I'm gonna use that patch again, run it through there. You want a little bit of resistance, so you can tell it's cleaning the whole bore. Then when I get here to the back end, I'm gonna pull it part way out, push it back in so it kind of doubles on itself, and I'm gonna clean those threads by spinning it. Because I want all that goop out of there and see all this extra stuff is what came out of the threads. Okay. So while that is drying, I'm going to switch over to the breech plug. All right. Again, you've got never seize on there, which is largely water soluble. And we're going to switch over to cleaning this. If you can see, it's pretty filthy because that's, that's where most of your garbage goes. It's into your breech when you fire it. So I'll give it a good wipe down before I do anything to it. And again, it wipes up pretty good because I've used the bore butter on it and it's kept a lot of the stuff from sticking. So you want to get all the old never sees or whatever it is you use for a lubricant off there and clean it right up in good shape. Then I'll take a pipe cleaner and I'll run it through the nipple. You may find a pipe cleaner may actually be too big. The key to it is you want to be able to see light through the flash hole. That's important. I can't, there's no way I'm going to be able to show you with a camera, but when you hold it up to a light and look through it, you'll be able to see a little tiny round spot of light. And give it a good visual inspection. Make sure that, uh, you know, you haven't, Got any bad spots in your thread or anything that's going to cause you problems later on. You can you can use a uh, bore brush and bore butter or whatever you want to go in and clean the extra little bit of the, the flash hole in here. The more cleaning you do, the better off you are. <laughs> now we're going to switch on to lubricating the, uh, the bore. Using the same type of a patch. I put it through the jag like you would with anything. Then I use this stuff. This is Thompson Center bore butter. Uh, I'm sure all the manufacturers make the same thing. You wanna, you wanna give it a good kneading because it will separate. It's, again, it's basically Crisco. <laughs> so it can separate a little bit. There is water in there. All right. You open it up, you can see it's yellow, well, this stuff is. I usually take what's in the cap first and I'll smear it on this patch. Get a little bit on the other side. At least I think I will. Take a little bit on my finger, put that on this side. You're not looking to goo up the whole inside of your, of your firearm. So basically you end up with that yellow stuff just kind of sitting there. Not a lot, like I said, not, not a large amount of material, just a little bit. And down the barrel we go. And this will put a nice coating of that bore butter in your barrel. Now you know it's pretty clean because you've already cleaned it. If there's any water in there, this is gonna take it out. And run it through there a few times. You're bound to get a little bit of blackness out still. So even though you still got a little bit of stuff out of it, you can see that mostly it's just that yellow 
more butter. All right, so now we've applied that. I'm gonna run a dry one through there just to make sure there isn't too much in there. I guess if you were putting it into long-term storage, you might wanna leave more in there. Run that through. And that bore is all set to go. Got a little bit of Nevesis. I use this stuff in a stick because I find it's a lot cleaner and a lot easier to deal with than using it with a brush. And I'll put a little bit of that on my threads here. Again, you don't need a lot. So basically I've just smeared some on the threads. That'll be enough so that it lubricates it and it doesn't make a mess. And start that back in the, in the breech. Use your tool. You wanna put that back in until it's tight. I don't over tighten them. This, again, it's pipe thread and there's no way that thing's gonna come back out unless you don't put it in right. So as long as it's all the way in, I wouldn't leave it loose, but you don't need it much more than finger tight. You don't need a whole lot of torque on it. If you do, you're just gonna make it more difficult for yourself to take it out later. And that gun right there is either ready to load and use tomorrow, or it's ready to put it away for the season. I'm betting on loading it and using it tomorrow. <laughs> there's a lot of people and a lot of resources out there that know a lot more about this than me that will tell you there's a lot better products. Maybe so. I use what works for me. I'm not going to begrudge anybody for trying something different. Safety, safety, safety. And always remember, black powder is a true explosive. It goes off a lot easier than smokeless powder for center fire firearms does. It's actually a true explosive. It explodes, it doesn't burn. Black powder is dangerous. Never forget that. Primers are dangerous. Always store your primers and your black powder in different locations. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed today's little foray into the world of muzzle loaders. <laughs> this is Scott from Whiskey and Sunshine Off Grid. Like and subscribe and have a good day. Be safe out there. Thanks for watching.